Good morning. Welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Today is the memorial of the first martyrs of the Holy Roman Church. Our celebrant is Father Salvo. This mass is being offered for Emma J. Kalaiko. The worship program for this morning's celebration can be downloaded at www.stpatrickscathedral.org slash live. Hymns can be found in the blue St. Michael's hymnal. At this time, we invite you to rise and join in our entrance hymn, number 689, O Worship the King, number 689. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, as we begin these sacred mysteries on this memorial of the first martyrs of the Holy Roman Church, let us begin by recalling our sins and asking our Lord to grant us his peace, his mercy, and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the abundant first fruits of the Roman Church by the blood of the martyrs, Grant, we pray, that with firm courage we may together draw strength from so great a struggle and ever rejoice at the triumph of faithful love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God the Almighty. Walk in my presence and be blameless. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after, after you that you must keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. God further said to Abraham, as for your wife Sarai, do not call her Sarai. Her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her and I will give, her, give you a son by her. Him also will I bless. He shall rise, give rise to nations and rulers of people shall issue from him. Abraham prostrated himself and laughed as he said to himself, can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or can, or can Sarah give birth at 90? Then Abraham said to God, let but Ishmael live on by your favor. God replied, nevertheless, your wife Sarah is to bear you a son and you shall call him Isaac. I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting pact to be his God and the God of his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of 12 chieftains and I will make of him a great nation. But my covenant with, I will maintain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with him, God departed from Abraham. The word of the Lord. 
See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday, we celebrated the great solemnity of St. Peter and St. Paul, remembering everything they did to begin the church, ending up their, their lives in, in martyrdom in Rome. And today we, set, we commemorate the first martyrs of Rome, the first Christian martyrs of Rome, which was in the year 64 when this happened, when the evil emperor Nero, who wanted to make space for, to, to expand his palaces, decided to burn down a a very big section of Rome. And as they say, whether it's it's just legend or not, that he was playing the fiddle as Rome Rome burned down. Immediately, the plan was that the scapegoats of the fires were the new Christians, who were a a, a group of people that were spreading and, and and the good news of the gospel was spreading, but people still didn't know what they were all about, and it was easy to discredit and to blame someone that other people just suspect because they don't have enough knowledge. And so therefore, because they were the scapegoats, this was all planned, they also, of course, were, were martyred in horrible ways, in torturous ways that it's too early in the morning to describe, but it just began the whole way of with these Christians were martyred through the centuries, and including to present day. And it's a sign, though, at the same time, which the martyrs always give us and always will give us, about not only the perseverance of their faith, but also about how much real faith they had and gratitude. Because first, let's not forget that it, this, this was not like someone would say like a cult or something like that. This is not people that didn't know any better. This is not people that basically had little choices in life, so this was just one. 
These were people that were trying to live their best life as possible, that had discovered the good news of the gospel, and that beautiful things had happened to them, like this leper who was healed. He and his family could not deny that Jesus had healed him. And therefore, if, if they believed so strongly and they loved God so much, they were not going to deny him just because their lives were at risk. Something that we all hope that we, on one side, we hope we were never in that predicament, but if we are, that we make the right decision and, and never deny Jesus Christ. But they, and they did it. They passed the test. They, they, they basically gave their lives of, to say how much they believed and that no one can take away from that. And that's something that has to inspire us because in the same way that their martyrdom is tragic, in the, in the, not, not in the spiritual sense because they triumphantly came into heaven immediately, but because evil things happen in the world, in the same way, all of this, that their willingness for this was because the good news of the gospel is real. Uh, the spreading of the kingdom of God that Jesus did is real. The, the healing, the, the forgiveness, the, the, the love and blessings Jesus brought everyone is real. And centuries later and millennia later, it's real. And, and that is why people to this day, unfortunately that exists, but people to this day are still giving, willing to give up their lives for the gospel because it is real. And therefore, let, let, us, let us want that ourselves. Let us want a faith and a perseverance and a trust and a gratitude and love for Jesus that we would be willing to give up our life for the gospel if that's what it took. Because basically, if the choice is is, is being martyred or, or, or denying Jesus Christ, that denying Jesus Christ would always be the last and, and, and the non-option. Uh, and so let us ask for that faith and let us thank the martyrs that despite everything they went through, despite the dangers, that they persevered because that's how much they loved our Lord and that's how much they loved the church. God bless you. And now, let us ask our Heavenly Father to help us with all of our needs. Let us pray for all members of the church. May we be given the gift of fear of the Lord so as to avoid sin and grow in our love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God guide them in working to promote the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are absent from the life of the church, may the Lord encourage them in their faith and deliver them from doubts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, wherever we are united in this Mass, may God embolden our faith to trust more fully in His promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for the soul of Emma, May God welcome them into his loving embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers we have brought before you and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs of Rome, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Patrick, Saint the martyrs of Rome, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 655, O Food of Exiles Lowly, number 655.
Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a beautiful day, everyone, and also safe travels for everyone that will be traveling during these holidays. And any blessings to all. We go forth singing number 612, Let All Things Now Living. Number 612.